Hi guys, this is Brad here. I'm here to talk to you about a little program, a um, little proxy program called UltraSurf. Um, as it states here, um, it's just saying that it was originally made in China uh, or designed for Chinese residents to bypass the government uh, firewall. Um, right now, at least, it uh, looks like it's running a little bit slower than normal. It's going to be a little bit harder to find available servers due to an increased demand in Iran, uh, most likely to... Uh, they probably have like some sort of firewall or some sort of privacy issue that they're having in Iran, so that's why this would be would be utilized. So, um, in terms of the download, uh, we're gonna be using the Windows client because I'm operating a Windows machine. So, um, it downloads as a zip file, and then you can just extract it, and I put it in my downloads folder. But um, that's kind of the, one of the best things about this program is how lightweight it is. There's no like the install process, you can literally put it on a flash drive and it, within seconds put it install it on a new machine with uh, not much issue. So uh, here is what, oh, it looks like it found a, uh, a viable connection pretty soon there when their little homepage pops up. So um, I will try to, it doesn't look like it can get any bigger, uh, I can't blow it up for you guys, but this is what the uh, UI looks like. Uh, has a couple uh, cool little options here. Uh, when you launch the program, it'll start Chrome automatically. Um, it'll give you their little home page. Um, when you exit, you can set it to delete cookies, delete history. Uh, you can set it to close the browser immediately when you exit. Um, disenable hotkeys. Um, there's little hotkeys that you can do. So, for example, if you want to hide it from your desktop, the icon goes away, and then you can um, show it again. And they have like a little breakdown of all the uh, little hotkeys that they have. One of my favorite ones is um, it exits the program immediately and it deletes the temporary and the uh, settings files. So uh, if you go to your files here, um, before when I had it, it was just the temp files, but once I launched it, it had gave me the configuration setting file as well. Um, so basically if I do that, um, control alt D, it'll get rid of the program um, and it should uh, get rid of the other temporary files as well. So if you're using it and you need to make sure that there's no trace of it, you can delete the temporary files along with it. Uh, make sure it's not apparent on the screen when you do it as well. So I'm going to relaunch it and it should find another server. It's contacting the server right now. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, just to do a little demonstration here, is to just uh, connect to one of their servers. Uh, it's going to give us a new IP address and then I'm going to restart it uh, a second time to make sure that the IP address changes when we reset the program because uh, one of the big drawbacks with this is given that it's a lightweight program and there's not a ton of different configuration settings along with it um, it can't do dynamic uh, IP changes meaning that some of the other proxy uh, applications will like for example change your IP address that it's using every like five minutes or something so you're a little bit more secure, so if your IP gets blocked, it'll just find a new one, and it's harder to track because you're constantly changing IPs. Uh, whereas with UltraSurf, you're given one IP per uh, per session. So let me just do a little demonstration here. Um, so this is a little, little homepage, like I mentioned. I'll just open a new tab here. Um, what is my, if I knew how to spell here, uh, what is my IP? So IP physics isn't detected just because it's using the proxy. Um, so this is what it's telling me my IP is. Um, in my experience, it always bases location in California, and it says that the ISP is uh, whatever this company is. Uh, obviously not my IP. Um, so I just copied that so we can compare. Um, excuse me. Later on to see if uh, our new IP will match this one, and it shouldn't because we're going to create a new session. So uh, once we're in the UI, we don't have to be in the UI, this can be minimized, but I'm just going to do the Control alt d to get rid of the temporary files as well, because in my experience, if you don't delete those temporary files, sometimes it'll utilize the same IP for whatever reason. Um, so we're just going to do it that way. Um, we're going to have it contact another server. Um, so we're just going to have it uh, go for a little while. Like, like, they, like they mentioned before, um, they're running a little bit slower due to the increased traffic from... Uh, foreign countries and that kind of thing because that's ultimately what it was designed for was to get past uh, those sort of firewalls so um, looks like it found one uh, keep in mind I'm just going to show you like right here um, they'll automatically set it to the highest speed in terms of your network connection so 
this 99.4% would imply that uh, the speed in which you're using is 99.4% of your normal network speed. Uh, I'm not really sure how true this number is because every single time I've used this program, it's always 99.4%. Um, so I'm not sure what metrics they use or how they pull that number, but it seems to be the same every single time. Um, but in my experience, the loading of web pages and stuff like that um, isn't necessarily any slower than normal. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that website. What is my IP? Um, so it gives us this, or sorry, rather, it gives us this new IP, and I'm just going to paste it up top. Um, and we can see that the IP that we had before is now different than this one right here. So um, if you need to, you can change the IP. Um, you could reset it every five minutes, and it'd be effectively the same as them just pulling a new IP. But if you were to utilize this program and have it running for an hour, it would never change the IP, which make it makes it probably a little bit less secure if someone's attempting to find what IP address you are using. So um, that is one of the biggest drawbacks with this. Um, I know I read an article regarding UltraSurf where a person was able to create a script to detect every single IP that UltraSurf would grab, because the way that UltraSurf works is that it has a a uh, collection of like thousands of IP addresses, but they're a finite number. So uh, what would happen is that if you ran a script to detect each IP and then systematically block each IP that UltraSurf was pulling off of, you could effectively make it so overnight you could run the script and then uh, it would block every single viable IP that UltraSurf would use and it wouldn't work at all. Um, it would block every single one. Um, so potentially, um, it is uh, possible that a government, like say like China's government, could go ahead and just do that for UltraSurf, block every single potential IP, and have a systematic approach to block every IP that it's currently running. Even if they make new ones, they could systematic systematically uh, block those uh, IPs. Um, but it's one of those things where if the percent of the population using this piece of software is very minimal. A lot of times they don't care or they don't really know. Um, it's hard to say exactly their thought process, but potentially it would be uh, possible to do that. Um, but yeah, in terms of some of the other settings, um, there's not much. Like I said, it's pretty lightweight. Um, it was originally made for Internet Explorer, but uh, they later moved on to Chrome as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the scope of what it would do. Um, it's just a really basic uh, uh, proxy that just simply changes your IP address and it can get around most common firewalls. It has a couple of cool little things with the uh, auto hotkeys, but for the most part, um, some of the big limitations were if you're using a proxy server to try to change your location, um, this program wouldn't work all that great because it pulls a random IP of, from their collection. They give you the most uh, viable server connection, and so you can't really pick what location it would be. Uh, uh, trying to be. So if you're trying to say access like a YouTube video that's region locked, uh, using this program wouldn't really help with that just because you can't really choose what location it would give you. Um, like I said, uh, for the most part, it'll just say California. I don't know if it's always that, but so far in my experience, it's always been the same location. Uh, but so if you're trying to access like, I don't know, like Canada's like Netflix region lock, uh, you wouldn't be able to access that. But it's mostly designed for uh, getting around basic firewalls. So it would be possible to use like if your work or whatever had a certain firewall, you could utilize this program to uh, get around it. And that's kind of the idea behind it is that you can hide it. And so it's not on your taskbar. You don't really see it. Um, and you can just show it. And like I said, one of the cool things is being able to delete all the temporary files at the same time. So yeah, that's pretty much the the bare bones kind of proxy server. If you just want a really simple one, really easy to use, the uh, the UI is really user friendly, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's not a ton of things that you can do with it, but also it's extremely easy to use and it's very transferable uh, to put on a flash drive and just slap on a new computer. If you're going to, I don't know, like a library and you want to get past your firewall or something along those lines, um, it would be used uh, for those sort of things because it's originally designed to uh, get past like government firewalls, but uh, yep, that's pretty much it. Um, and hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit about it. So cool. Thank you.